Sublime Text has a reputation for being a blazingly fast text editor. From text startup times to the commands that make editing text quickly and easily, it's a very highly performant text editor. It also tries to stay out of your way as much as possible so that you can get on with the business of text editing, which unfortunately means that sometimes there are features in Sublime that are hard to discover in any sort of natural way. We were actually discussing this recently in the Sublime Text Discord, killer features of Sublime Text that we can't live without, but which we may not have even realized were there for an extended period of time. So I thought we should cover those sorts of things here uh, in the channel. And today we're going to cover some of the killer features of Sublime Text that you can't live without that perhaps you might not even have known were there in the first place. <music> Hey, hello fellow Sublime Text fanatics, Odin Narrator, and welcome to this week's video on cool commands in Sublime Text. The idea behind this video series is that there's a lot of functionality in the core Sublime, not even packages that you can add to Sublime, but just the functionality that it has out of the box that make it a top-notch text editing experience when it comes to manipulating files, whether you're writing prose or writing web pages or writing source code, as many of us are in one of these three different sets of situations. And because of Sublime's philosophy of staying out of your way as much as possible, with the graphical environment, giving you as much room as possible to work with your text so you can get on with the business of writing the files that you need to write to get your job done, it can be possible that there are features in there that are killer features that will impact your daily use of Sublime Text and make you that much more efficient that you perhaps take a little bit of time to discover if you even discover them at all. This is a topic that we talked about recently in the Sublime Text Discord, and so I've gathered together just a small sampling of some of the more common things that people express uh, incredulity about uh, that these features exist and it took them a while to discover that they actually exist. Hopefully you will uh, feel the same way about one of these and uh, this is a call to action for you as well because there's a lot of functionality in Sublime Text like this, various tips and tricks that you can use to make your text editing quicker and easier. Let me know down in the comment section below for any of the tips that we covered here today. Did you already know that these commands existed? How do you use them in your day-to-day -day use of Sublime Text? Or if you didn't know that they existed. Is this, are these going to be game changers for you? How are they going to enhance your usage of Sublime Text going forward? And if you have any other tips and tricks for things that you learned about Sublime Text that make your editing life so much easier once you realize that they were they were there, let me know down in the comments section below this video. While you're going down there, you might want to use the buttons to thumb subscribe and share and ring the bell notification icon so you'll know when the next videos in this series and other video series on the channel become available. And in last week's uh, video, we talked about how I was opening up a Sublime Text Discord for you to be able to talk to me about uh, topics that we cover here on the channel, the videos I cover, videos, topics in live streams, both here and on Twitch, and all the packages that I write, and just generally chatting. That Discord is now available, and there's a link to it down in the description as well. The first thing we're going to talk about here is Quick Add Next. Now, whatever the reason it is that you use Sublime Text, you probably run into a situation where Quick Add Next would make your life a little bit easier. Perhaps you are writing the next great American novel in Sublime Text and you've accidentally named a character or something that you want to swap to something else in a small localized portion of a document. Perhaps you're working on a programming language of some sort and you've named a function or variable in a way that you want to easily swap that to be something else. Or perhaps you're working on a web page and you want to change one tag for another, or you want to change the name of one CSS class to another. All of these things have in common the idea that there's some word in the buffer that you want to edit to be some other word. And you could use something like find and replace for that, but that can be a little heavy handed if the same word appears in multiple places but there's a small targeted locale where you actually want to make these particular changes and so how do you do that do you edit these sorts of things manually one after the other with a copy and paste type operation no you use the quick add next command for that and it goes a little bit something like this you find the word that you want to change and again this could be anything tag name class name variable name function name any word you like while the cursor is inside that you're going to hit the key that triggers the quick add next command and sublime is going to select that particular word. Now here's where the magic happens because every time you reinvoke the command, the next instance of that word will be automatically selected wherever it happens to be in the buffer starting at the point where you are and moving forward. And every time you do this, you're adding one new cursor to the file or one new carrot to the file, depending on how you think about that sort of thing. Once you have all of them selected in this manner, you can easily just type to replace whatever it is that you'd like to change this word to for something else. Now this command actually works in another way as well because if 
if you let Sublime make the selection for you by putting the cursor in it and then hitting the key, it will select the whole word and then find instances of that whole word and only that whole word. However, you can also do this in a different way by manually selecting some text first and then using Quick Add Next. And in that case, it will find the next instance of the selected text, which might not be a whole word. So if you need to swap partial words, you can do that as well quickly and easily. Now, of course, if you're doing something like this, you might run into a situation such as the one that I've mocked up here in this very contrived example here in the video, where perhaps there's a word that you want to replace, but you don't want to replace it everywhere. There might be a couple of instances in the middle uh, of the ones that you want to change that you want to leave alone. And how do you resolve this particular problem? That's the next command we're going to talk about here, which is the quick skip next command. Now, the idea behind this command is that when a word is selected and you're using quick add next, it will unselect the current word and skip over it to the next one. When you use quick add next, Sublime is looking forward through the file in order to find the next instance of that word so that it can select it for you and allow you to work with it. In our examples here, those are all inside the screen, but that might not be the case. They could be far away. So you don't know until the cursor gets there that that might be a place where you don't want to do anything with. But all you have to do in this particular case is use the quick skip next command when you have an item selected and Sublime will unselect it and skip over it to the next one. So if you were renaming a variable that just happened to be, for example, a word that you used in some comments, you can rename the variable but skip over the other versions of that word and leave them alone just as well. And one last thing in here that really blows the noodle of a lot of people that are new to Sublime or veteran users as well is the soft undo command. The undo command in text editors and software in general, we're familiar with that. That undoes the previous action that you did. Soft undo, on the other hand, does the same thing but to the selected text. You can actually select some text and then soft undo to move the selection and the selection related events back to the state they were in previously. So here's a situation where this might be handy. There's a situation in your file where you're going to use quick add next to select a whole bunch of instances of a word that you want to swap for something else. And you hit the key and you hit the key and you accidentally go too far and now more things are selected. So what do we do here? Do we press escape to go back to a single selection and then do the whole thing again? You could, or if you discover that you've gone too far, you can use the soft undo command to undo some of the selection events until you get things back to the state that you were wanting to be in. You can even go back farther than you intended and use quick skip next to go to the next uh, one if you accidentally left one in that you didn't intend to. And of course, there's a soft redo as well if you decide that you made a mistake when you undid something a little bit too far. Once you start getting used to the idea of having multiple edit points in Sublime Text, you're quickly going to become addicted to the idea of how you can use this to make your editing life a little bit easier. Now, as an extra quick tip on something like this, when you have any text selected, no matter how it was that you selected it, you can press the left arrow key to unselect the text and jump the cursor to wherever that selection started, or the right arrow key to unselect the text and jump to the end. So imagine the situation where you have multiple selections that you've done with Quick Add Next, and you need to add some text to the beginning of them. For example, if there were object properties and you forgot to put the name of the object that they're properties of on the front of them. Or if you needed to add a suffix to the end, like if all of the items that you were selecting were the names of objects and you needed a property out of them. This is something that you can do quickly and easily. Now, what if you had a situation where you wanted to do something like this, but you had the list of properties and you needed to add an object to them? Or any sort of other situation, this is of course a contrived example just for purposes here, use this uh, in your own editing as you see fit, where you have a bunch of words and you want to edit them all simultaneously, but they're not all the same word. How do we do something like this? Well, there's ways with the mouse to add multiple selections. There's uh, mouse combinations that allow you to click and add new carrots. There's also key bindings to do this very thing as well, because there's an add cursor above and add cursor below command, which as their name suggests, will add a cursor to the line above where cursors are currently in the file or add one to the line below. So in a situation like the, again, contrived example we have here, it's very quick and easy via key bindings to just add some new cursors to this, this sequence of lines, quickly hit the quick add next command to select all of them and then jump to the beginning or the end as appropriate to make modifications. And doesn't that make your life that much easier? You could probably think of a thousand different ways to use something like this, right?
And along with the idea of being able to do something like this, here's something else that sometimes people are not quite aware of. If you have multiple cursors, you can do a copy operation and the text for all of those items will be copied. Now, if you were to go back to a single selection and to do a paste, you'd end up with all of the text from all of those things all cranked together into one paragraph. But if you were to, for example, have five cursors in a file and select all of those items and copy them and still have five cursors later somewhere else in a file, you could easily do a paste operation and each one of those items will paste in in the same order that they originally copied out. And this is also a mind-bogglingly awesome thing as well for a variety of situations that sometimes people don't even realize that this is a thing that they can do. There's a lot of functionality and tricks like this in Sublime Text to make your text editing life that much better. This doesn't even begin to scratch the surface for the sorts of things that we could explore in a video series like this. For example, if you're a web developer, it's very easy to mock up the content of your pages by having text that's very easily wrapped inside of tags. Or if you have some lorem ipsum text already inside of a tag, you can easily expand the selection to get rid of that text quickly and easily as well. And Sublime also has the ability to automatically close tags for you to make sure that that you always use the correct one if, like me, you're terrible at that sort of thing. But those are all topics we're going to cover in a future video in this series. So you're going to want to use those buttons down below if you haven't already done so to thumb subscribe and share and ring the bell notification icon so when those videos and other videos become available, you'll know about it. Remember, you can also drop your own tips down in the comments section below or in one of the live streams or the Discord that are now open to you. And whether I see you in any of those three places or in the next video, this is Odat Nerd asking you to please have a sublime day.